One of the most requested videos I get asked for in Project Zomboid is to make a series where I clear out an entire city. Since I've never attempted a project like this before, I figured the best thing to do was to scale up the difficulty immensely, so I went with everyone's favorite city, scaled the population up to insane, set the helicopter events to sometimes instead of once, cranked the become desensitized settings from 500 minimum to 5000 with the maximum at 10,000 like a true epic gamer. For traits and occupations, I went with the Repairman for the two levels and 100% XP boost in maintenance, which, coupled with Fast Learner, is completely broken. For negatives, I went Slow Reader, Cowardly, Smoker, Prone to Illness, Conspicuous, Agoraphobic, Hemophobic, Slow Healer, High Thirst, Thin Skinned, Weak Stomach, and Very Underweight. For positives, I chose Cat's Eyes, Dexterous, Outdoorsman, Fast Learner, Organized, Strong, Fit, Gymnast, Adrenaline Junkie, and Lucky. And at this point, I had 3 points left, so I said fuck it and went with Speed Demon and Wakeful. Because I'm a psychopath, I also chose to cuck myself one more time and start completely naked with zero gear. Getting into things, I spawned in and threw on life and living while I looted the spawn house. Found some pasta, which was great for gaining weight, and found some clothing upstairs, including some fancy shoes. I found a pipe wrench in the bathroom as well, and with that, I stepped outside into chaos. It felt like a scene straight out of World War Z. Thousands of zombies on each block, grouped up, or roaming wild. There was nowhere I could escape to that wasn't completely overrun. Now, originally, I had planned on trying to get into an apartment complex and would knock out the stairs if I found a sledgehammer, then use planks from disassembled furniture to platform my way around the city to various POIs. But that just wasn't possible due to the sheer volume of zombies that spawn here on insane population. With that plan off the table, I switched focus entirely, and my big goal for today became just making it to the outskirts of the city. There was no point in trying to base up near the heart of Louisville at this point since there were literally thousands of zombies on each block, so my safest options became the southeast or the southwest mansions. The issue with the mansions is that they're quite literally across the largest and most populated city in the game. Trying to get there now would be near impossible, and trying to get there without pulling 20,000 zombies with me would make it even more difficult. Because of this, I chose the southeast houses, and began making my way over to them. After hopping the fence into one of the backyards, I began clearing out the zombies in the vicinity. This took some time since I was trying to stay somewhat stealthy, but by that evening I had cleared the backyard and house and began looting the house. I moved some non-perishable food upstairs as well as some skill books and a sewing kit that I found. Outside of that, I organized the kitchen so all my food was in one cabinet and then put all the perishable items in the freezer. I read through the magazines that I had acquired and finally knocked out for the day. That was until I woke up at 2am to glass breaking downstairs. I could hear a zombie outside my door, so I prepared for the worst and whipped it open. Luckily there was only one upstairs that was pretty easy to take care of, but when I walked downstairs I found three more already in the house, one breaking down my door, and a couple more stragglers in the backyard. I'd finished up with them around 3.30 and chose to hang out upstairs for a few hours since I wasn't tired enough to fall back asleep. 
As soon as I walked outside the following morning, I was greeted with what I presumed to be a small group, until it turned out to be something like 20 zombies that I was chaining around the next house down. This went on for some time, until I realized that this wasn't something I could win, in which case I baited the horde inside and then climbed out a window and snuck away. After moving north a couple houses, I chose one that looked safe enough and began picking off the zombies around it. My best weapon right now is my feet. Since I only have one wrench, my biggest concern right now is weapons. And the best way for me to go about obtaining more was either to forage for spears or get lucky in a couple houses. On my first house of the day, I got incredibly lucky and found a hammer, a screwdriver, and a machete in full condition. After looting the rest of the house, I came away with some more skill books and a saw. I even managed to catch life and living before heading out, which leveled up my carpentry. After that wrapped up, I took the TV back with me since my original house didn't have one in it. I wanted to start pushing into the dead end portion of the neighborhood, so I picked out the closest house and looted that one as well for the day. Now one thing I'm finding myself struggle with early on is that there's always a ton of zombies hanging out inside of the houses. It's been rare that I find a building that only has like one or two zombies in it. Instead, it's like walking into one of those off-brand Mormon families with like 30 people living in each house. I managed to find a crowbar and two hammers here, along with some more food, before heading back to my base. I was clearly exerted, and just when I thought the coast was clear, I came back to find a horde gathered in my backyard. I didn't want to risk fighting so many right now, given my Moodle situation, so I went in through the front door, managed to drop my food off in the kitchen unseen, and headed upstairs to hide in my room and pray that no one would hear me throughout the night. After waking up twice throughout the night to what I thought was nightmares, I realized the hard way that grabbing the hemophobic trait was probably the worst one I could have picked. This is going to require me to either wash my clothes every night or take beta blockers or booze to fall asleep. Anyway, day three was spent entirely clearing out the dead end portion of the neighborhood, which was really only like two houses, but with the amount of zombies in each one, it took way longer than I would have liked to walk through and clear out each house and then loot it. This entire day was really just repeating the process of baiting out zombies, looting a house, bringing all that loot back to my safe house, washing my clothes, and then heading back onto the next one. A very slow, but necessary process.
And after spending the day pretending to be a Karen in the local neighborhood watch, I had reached the last house and immediately decided that it was going to be my new home. There were actually way more zombies than I anticipated here, so I spent a few hours taking care of them. And after that wrapped up, I circled back to my first safe house, grabbed all my shit there before dumping it on the second floor hallway. From there, I went through and organized each category. I split the three bookshelves into skills, magazines, and entertainment. Clothing, watches, and tailoring all went in the master bedroom. All non-perishable food went into the closest cabinet for now until I had time to set everything up, and medical supplies went into the bathroom. One thing that I'm continuing to do is completely underestimate the amount of zombies in a house. Like, just take a look at this. Watch how many zombies just appear out of nowhere in a seemingly quiet house. Moving on, today's goal was garbage bags. I needed to make rain collectors so that I could wash myself every day to avoid spiraling into an anxious, depressive rage like a pissed off teenager. My big plan to get said garbage bags led me to the music festival up the road. When I got there, there were obviously way too many zombies to even consider fighting right now, but that wasn't even an idea I entertained. My plan was to hang on the outskirts and slowly group up a horde behind me so that I could hit all of the garbage cans in the area. This worked out perfectly, and by the time I finished my run, I had gathered 15 garbage bags. While I was on the way out, I decided to bounce from car to car to see if they had anything good in their glove box worth taking, when I found a truck that appeared to be in great condition, with its key in the glove box for me. The only issue it seemed to have was that it was low on fuel, but I remembered seeing a couple gas cans in other cars, and worst case scenario, there were a ton of empty soda bottles in the garbage cans that I could take to siphon fuel with. The last thing I did today was head back to my old house where I took on the horde that I had baited inside a few days earlier. At this point, I had completely forgotten where I set the crowbars down at, as I can't seem to find them in my new safe house, hence why I came back here. Unfortunately, it was all for nothing, because I searched my OG house and didn't find them anywhere. Kind of a bummer, but I guess it is what it is at this point. After spending most of the following morning trying my best to hit carpentry level 4, 
Life and Living came in clutch at noon when I got the Carpentry Show, which boosted me past level 4 and a chunk into level 5. Also, I'm an absolute dumbass. All the stuff I couldn't find was sitting in the garbage bag, in a desk in the second floor of my new safe house. I must not have taken it out when I moved all my shit over and just threw it in the desk because that bag said crafting on it. Anyway, full retard moment aside, I built out three rain collectors, which should, in theory, be enough for me since I have a plan to get through nights now. I'm going to keep a clean pair of clothes next to the bed to change into at night. Then in the morning, I can put my bloody clothes back on. At least, until I have enough water that I can afford to just waste hundreds of units of it daily. Either that, or I could probably just use a washing machine and dryer, but that's way too logical. Anyway, that was the main highlight of day 5. I spent the rest of my time just reading some skill books. The next target on my list was the fire station, which was located up the road a little past the music festival. I needed axes from there to cut down trees for fortifications, so I set out early that morning. When I got there, I noticed a ton of zombies hanging around and figured now was a good time to put a dent in the population on this side of the city. Towards the end, I became exerted, but everything was going smoothly. That was, until I fat-fingered Q and pulled a whole separate group of zombies in. And luckily, it was only a smaller group and I was able to take them out pretty easily as well. I can also see this becoming my base as I continue to push into Louisville. It's got a helipad on it and I could build platforms from here to the neighboring buildings as escape plans if needed. Also, it's got a great view. Anyway, onto the main building. There were some small pockets of zombies out front that I had to clear out before getting in, and when I finally got inside, it was loaded with zombies. Obviously, those needed to be taken care of before I could start looting, so here you go. This took way longer than it should have. 
All things considered, the exertion really took a toll on me here since it started to take 8 or 9 hammer swings to finally kill a single zombie, but eventually, I was able to whittle them down and finish them off. After looting the first floor, I was up to 6 axes, another crowbar, a few pipe wrenches, and a propane torch. I also found an industrial propane tank, but decided to leave it here for now since it would be way too risky to try to carry that back while the roads weren't cleared. I got up to the second floor and cleared out the remaining zombies before diving into the medical room to drop my gear off. I'd be sleeping here for tonight since it was already getting late and I was completely exhausted. After waking up very early the next morning, I decided to risk it and head back to base severely over encumbered. This worked out about as well as you'd expect it to and saw me max up my exertion while being tailed by about 25 zombies. I only had one real plan for this situation and it involved me getting back to my original safe house. If I could get there, I could shut the door behind the zombies, sticking them up against it, while I snuck out the front door and around the fence back to my new safe house. I really can't believe that actually worked. Well, aside from one straggler, but he was an easy cleanup. From there, I spent the rest of the day doing a mix of recovering and contemplating if I wanted to take a chance and move my base up to the firehouse, which would basically mean I just pulled an incredibly stupid move, almost killing myself in the process for absolutely nothing. And after sitting on it for a bit, I decided that if I was to move back up there, I would need to do some serious zombie clearing if I was going to have any chance to move. This would involve clearing out some of the roads, it would have to be the music festival, and the woods to the east. All before I even thought about driving my car up there. But I'm an incredibly stubborn person, and once I have an idea, it's really hard to get me off of it. So, the following morning, I would begin the process of capturing and fortifying the fire station. Now as much as I'd love to, I can't just load up the truck and drive into the fire station. The truck would pull literal thousands of zombies, and I just don't have the resources to deal with those numbers yet. My plan for today was to head back to the music festival and slowly begin working my way up the street from there. I'm sure this is going to take several days, and we haven't hit a helicopter event yet, so I'm 100% positive that, with my luck, we'll spend all this time clearing out the area just for a heli event to replenish every zombie that I kill. But I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. For now, I'm just going to focus on the task at hand, no matter how blurry it is. I didn't have to look too hard to find my first horde, which was just loitering around the main road. After taking care of them, I dipped into the nearest house to rest up and clean my clothing. I came up with a plan involving me pushing into the music festival and spam shouting to pull in zombies, but I think I still need to get some more points in my nimble skill before trying to take on any larger hordes. What I tried to do instead was work my way through the area, picking off the stragglers before eventually dealing with any smaller groupings that had stacked up inside the gates. During one of these encounters, I had what I can only describe as the luckiest moment of all of my time playing Project Zombie. When I got grabbed by a zombie, proceeded to fall into a group, get up with only a scratch on my leg, and walk away. After bandaging the scratch on my leg, it was right back into the action.
I spent all day trying to clear out all the zombies from the music festival, but by late that afternoon, I was exerted and becoming tired. I chose to just fall back to my safe house for the night and continue the push tomorrow. I know there's still a ton of zombies in the woods east of the music festival as well, so my goal for the 17th was going to be to start clearing them out to make moving to the fire station just a little easier. Like you just heard me say, my focus the next morning was the woods across the street from the music festival. There's not really any groupings, but there's a ton of individual zombies that could easily form a horde if they hear my truck driving down the road. One item I brought along today as well was a gas can, so that I could siphon fuel from any of the cars I found in the parking lot. After clearing out a pretty large chunk of the woods, I rested and washed up before making my way back to the music festival parking lot. After gathering some fuel, I found a van from the Kentucky Herald that looked to be in good condition, with the keys sitting in the ignition. I chose to dump my siphon fuel into it and start it up, giving me two vehicles. Now, there is a gas station near the fire station, but I can't imagine it'll be easy to access, so it's not feasible right now. I turned my attention back to the music festival for one very specific reason here. On day one, when I was making my way down to the neighborhood, I noticed a generator sitting in the northwestern corner of the festival, inside the fencing. Luckily, I didn't have to look too hard, and managed to find a second generator in the center of the gated area. Of course, I couldn't just grab it though, as a ton of zombies had noticed me and had begun making their way over. After dealing with them, I grabbed the generator and went back to a zombie that I had killed earlier to find a pair of scissors because I had found a booth inside the festival grounds that held a ton of leather jackets that I could shred and use for strips. After arriving back at the base that evening, I began packing up and loading everything into the trunk of my van. I feel like after two days of heavy combat, we should have an opening to get to the fire station, and we can start clearing out cells from there once we're all set up. That being said, I think this is a good place to stop for now. So far, we've secured a small neighborhood, and we're right on the cusp of pushing into the fire station to take it over and turn into our main base for the next few months as we begin slowly pushing into the city. We still have a lot of work to get done here, but we've also made a lot of progress and have really set ourselves up for endgame already, which is insane to think about. A lot of this is dependent on getting established first. I could just run into Louisville and fire a bunch of guns, but there's no real chance of me completing this challenge with that method. If I want to have a chance of clearing out all of Louisville, I need to be smart about how I do it. This is a long-term goal, and to achieve that, I need to complete my short-term goal of creating a secure area for me to retreat to if needed. A lot of this first month is going to be focused around creating a self-sustaining base so that I can turn my focus to fighting zombies. But that doesn't mean I'm going to neglect combat. As you've seen so far, this series is predicated on combat, so don't freak out if I spend a few days focusing on building out a more secure base for myself. I'm just not going to be taking on massive hordes yet, because that'd be stupid, and it's a surefire way to get myself killed. I need to level up my agility skills some more, and get a couple more levels in combat skills before I feel comfortable enough to go about taking on a max pop city. 
That being said, we've been able to chalk up 414 kills in 8 days, which is a lot more than I was expecting. A huge thank you to my YouTube members who make it possible for me to make content like this. If you'd like to support the channel, you can join for as little as $1 a month and unlock access to over 20 videos just for you. I appreciate you all, and as always, thanks for stopping by.